There's never really been a bad era to buy a luxury car. Even in times of historic crappiness, top tier brands typically put out pretty memorable metal. And yet, today's era seems especially loaded with swaggy sedans. From BMW to Volvo, it's actually difficult to think of a competitor that isn't excellent. And in that landscape of near perfection, this new Mercedes-Benz E-Class might be the high watermark. With big engineering gains and lots of little luxuries for the driver, this car makes Mercedes' tagline of the best or nothing eminently believable. How does it look? The current Mercedes family of cars shares a kind of elegant swoopiness that, while not uniformly beautiful, definitely binds the brand together. The E-Class is perhaps the most sedate of the lot, with curving metal on the body sides and bold light signatures that just set the three-box shape apart from the herd. The design restraint should allow the E to age gracefully, and it also wears this moody green paint color really well. How's the storage? So the volume of luggage space for the E-Class actually measures out fairly small for the class. It's 13.1 cubic feet, and it, when you compare that to something like the BMW 5 Series with 18.5 cubic feet, you'll understand why it's a slightly tighter squeeze for our full set of luggage from away. I was never left wanting for a place to put my stuff in this cabin. The cup holders are large, and there's a pocket fit for a phone or keys in front of them. Plus more room inside the armrest and a dedicated sunglasses holder. Is it roomy? Even at my size, I didn't feel the least bit cramped behind the wheel of the E-Class, nor should I in any mid-sized luxury car. Legroom, headroom, and elbow room are all accounted for. In the back, headroom in particular is above average. You shouldn't hear many complaints from adult passengers riding in the rear seats. How does the interior feel? Now, this is undoubtedly a nice cabin, but I actually think there are a weird mix of things in here. On one hand, you have this really fancy looking shiny black lacquered trim with metal accents that looks like it could have dropped straight out of an S-Class. On the other hand, these seats are clad in what Mercedes calls MB text, otherwise known as faux leather. Now, real leather would cost you $1,600 extra, but I think it would have really pulled the cabin together. Is it well equipped? Even the most basic E300 comes with niceties like keyless start, dual zone climate control, a touchpad controller, and that really gigantic 12.3 inch screen. Our car has the most expansive $11,250 Premium 3 Package 2. Adding options like automatic parking, adaptive cruise control with steering assist, blind spot monitoring, and active lane keeping, massaging seats that are heated, wireless phone charging, a powered trunk lid, Burmeister sound system, and about 15 other items. How do you say tricked out in German? How's the infotainment system? To start, the infotainment presentation is incredible with that huge screen almost connecting with the all-digital instrument cluster for a very futuristic forward view. Touch controls rule the cabin, with a touch-sensitive central controller and thumb buttons on the steering wheel. The graphics are clear and pretty, responsiveness to inputs very quick, and total software feature set very deep. Throw in the almost mandatory iPhone and Android integration, and you've got a system that can stand with the best in the car world. Is it a good daily driver? So the first thing that you notice when you get behind the wheel of this car is that it's got exceptional ride quality and it's really, really quiet. In fact, I would say that the E-Class earns the designation of wafting, even though that's something that's typically associated with an S-Class or a Rolls-Royce, a true large luxury sedan. 
The other thing that I really appreciate is that for a car with ride quality that's this fine, the controls actually don't feel overly light or disconnected from the road. There's not a lot of steering feel or anything, but it definitely feels like it's well weighted and really solid as it's going down the street. Another thing that I find very useful on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it's not daily driving technically, are the cameras on the car. Now, around view cameras aren't that uncommon anymore these days, especially in the luxury class, and the Mercedes has those as well. So you can see sort of a bird's eye view, but it also has front facing cameras and backup cameras. So if you're doing something like parking, of course, but also negotiating really tight spaces, the cameras come into play and they make things really easy, even for a kind of large sedan. Is it fun to drive? So the E300 model name designates that this car has a two liter turbo under the hood. That's a four cylinder making 241 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. Now, if those output figures don't sound impressive to you, it's because they're not particularly. The Mercedes is sort of middle of the pack for two liter turbos in the luxury segment, meaning it's quick enough. I think it's a little over six seconds, zero to 60. It certainly won't embarrass you, but it doesn't feel very involving or fast either. Now, as I mentioned before, the overall handling profile is engineered a lot more towards being quiet and being smooth than it is to being uh, aggressive in a quartering situation. That being said, the E-Class won't embarrass itself if you do happen to throw it into a bend. So for a big car, it just doesn't feel that soft in the corner, it stays really flat. And another thing helping out are these sport seats, which are active, which means the bolsters kind of push you to keep you upright as you're uh, going around a turn. The bottom line here is that if you like the E-Class package, but you want more of a hooligan, you should save up your money for the E43 AMG. How's the fuel economy? I'm driving the 4Matic, which means all-wheel drive, version of the E300 with fuel economy ratings of 22 miles per gallon city and 29 highway. If you can get away with the rear driver, that highway rating goes up to 30 miles per gallon. How much is it? The barest E300 sedan starts at just over $52,000. The E300 4Matic goes over $54,000 to start, and our car with its upgraded wheels and fat options package is about 70 grand. What are the negatives? The one big fat negative in the otherwise impeccable E-Class argument is that BMW 5 Series you see rolling up in the blind spot monitoring system. The Beamer and the Benz are in lockstep in nearly every regard, meaning it's personal preference that'll probably make you decide, rather than any negatives in the E300's game. Who should buy it? I said at the top that the midsize segment is chocked full of great options these days. And it's true that brands like Audi, Cadillac, Jaguar, and Genesis offer really nice products. But the fact is, those brands want what Mercedes-Benz already has. The company is still the standard for luxury motoring, and this E-Class might be the most compelling product it has. Hey, thanks for tuning in to watch our Why Buy. If you guys have questions or comments, please feel free to write them down in the comments section. And if you like this series, you should absolutely subscribe to our channel. Before long, you're gonna to wanna to check out MotorOne.com too, where lots of other great stuff happens. We're also on Facebook, on Twitter, and just about everywhere else in the social media universe.